So uh, because of the, we have a time a schedule, uh, without further ado, I think we will just to move to first session. And uh, the, we have, uh, in the first session, we have uh, four uh, speakers and also one uh, discussant. So as I said earlier that uh, each speaker will have a 10 or 12 minutes maximum, and then uh, move to the, uh, if we have a more time and then have some questions and answers uh, before we finish the sessions. So the first speaker of this session is me. <laughs> I like to introduce the, uh, about the book whole structure. Uh, so uh, I will share the, uh, my screen. Right, uh, this is uh, my presentation. And you, if you visit uh, the Polygraph website, you can see this screen. Uh, this is the book is published. And uh, next screen, please. So uh, we have uh, four uh, editors, Professor Yamagata and me, and uh, Professor Kondo Hisahiro, and Professor Umi Kim. Uh, uh, Kim Unju is the editors of the book. And I'd like to give you a background of the book. Uh, already, uh, this is mentioned, and uh, this is the uh, collaboration. This book is a collaboration between uh, Japan Society for International Development and the Korean Association of International Development Corporations. And the, the, these two academic associations exchange ideas and the collaboration for a long time, but uh, we, we decided to, to publish a book uh, to come in, uh, produce an outcome uh, of this academic collaborations. And I think this is also very important, the timing of this uh, book, because uh, uh, between Japan and uh, South Korea has a very uh, cold relations uh, last of a few years, but uh, our academic interaction continue and produce this book. So this is a very important uh, contribution, not only to international uh, development studies, but also uh, the relation between two countries. And also I like to uh, mention that uh, this book is uh, possible uh, because of the uh, support we receive. The first I like to appreciate the uh, contributors, uh, the academics and experts who contribute uh, their academic work to this book. Without uh, their contributions, I think uh, this book will not coming out. So, uh, again, thank you very much for contribution to your work, to this book. And also I'd like to acknowledge the uh, support from uh, UN SCAP's uh, support. Uh, I already mentioned that uh, they uh, hold the regular meetings for the international scholars so that we can discuss uh, ideas and also exchange uh, academic debate. And the lastly, I like to also uh, express my thanks uh, to Global Development Institute for Public Affairs, the formerly Asia Development Institute, SMU. Uh, GDI especially support this project, the Korean uh, side of the work. So uh, that uh, support it will be very useful. And uh, today, uh, GDI also convene uh, this uh, book launch seminar. Next, please. Well, I, I'd like to introduce the rationale of this book. Uh, you know that uh, we have uh, two important uh, international donors in East Asia, uh, Japan and uh, South Korea. Japan is a, a founding member of OECD and one of the biggest international donors. And the Korea is a new member and coming to the second decade as a member of OECD. So there is a growing uh, demand for the uh, 
systematic studies of the uh, ODA policies in these two countries. And uh, more importantly, uh, comparative studies. At the same time, uh, we have uh, increasing criticism of ODA policy of the Japan and the South Korea, not only from outside, but also inside. So we need to address this uh, kind of criticism as well, but this is only possible that the comprehensive and the systematic research. So that is the uh, starting point of the, this book. So we set up three uh, questions throughout this book. Uh, the first question is the, what are the underlying dynamics of policy making in Japanese and the South Korean ODA? This question uh, really addressed the first the rationale of ODA policy, normative ground of ODA, and the second, uh, institutional dynamics of ODA policy. So we try to address this first question in the uh, part one of the book. And the second question we pose for the book is the, will the national interest be the goal of international development cooperation, or will be creating global public good uh, be the main objective of this country's ODA policy. So this is a kind of uh, begging questions, dilemmas of the, uh, the ODA policy in Japan and the Korea. So this, this question is needs to address uh, not only uh, academically, but also public uh, policy terms. So this is the second question. The third question the book pose is about the future. Do Japan and South Korea have a new ODA strategy for uncertain world? So this is the question for the future ODA policies. And in the conclusion, uh, we try to uh, address these questions. So this is a research questions. And the next, please. So uh, before I move to the, uh, each chapter's presentation, I like to give you a whole structure of the book. Uh, this book has a, a part to three parts together with the introduction and the conclusions. So part one is a policy rationale and the evolution of the development institute. And the part two is a role of the private sectors in developing corporations. And the part three is emerging agendas and new challenges for development uh, corporations. So this uh, part three has a chapter. So this is the whole uh, structure of the book. Before I uh, move uh, to the next speaker, I just like to point out that this one innovation of this book, this book has a unique comparative framework, which we call pairwise comparative work in separate chapters. So there are many similarities, but also there are big uh, differences uh, between uh, Japan and Korea. So we try uh, compare these two countries ODA policy in a pairwise but in separate chapters by Korean uh, authors and Japanese authors. So we have a same scene, but the Japanese scholars and the Korean scholars make a pair, but they address this same scene in a separate chapter. So, so this is a kind of first step for the more comparative, systematic comparative work for the future. So uh, without uh, further ado, I'd like to move into the, the next uh, presenter. And without uh, going to table of contents, because you can refer this table of contents later uh, in the in the.